King of Tyre. He called himself the king of the whole country. And you actually look in the Bible and you can find Sidonia as being the name that they would use. It was also known as Phoenicia by the Greeks, but that's kind of a derogatory term too because Phoenicia just means red men. The red men came from there. And there's conjecture over it was maybe they, the dye industry dyed these guys who when they would go and trade with the Greeks, they'd have all this purple dye on their hands and stuff. But I think it has a lot more to do with the idea that Mars was part of their culture. Mars, their red planet. And even the face on Mars has some precedent in the Bible. It's in Ezekiel 41, 18 and 19. The panels of the holy place, and this is talking about a temple that doesn't exist yet in Jerusalem, were made with cherubims and palm trees. So the palm tree was between cherub and a cherub, and every cherub had two faces. So that the face of a man was towards the palm tree from one side, and the face of a young lion toward the palm tree on the other side. It was made throughout the house. And that's exactly what we have here. According to the research that Holden's been doing, and according to this precedent that's been set up, uh, defining cherubs, defining what's going on on Mars. Holden told me that it was a very strange thing I had, this idea that there's angelic civilization somewhere, or that they existed, that they could ever manipulate anything into a structure. But the Bible actually says that's exactly what they did. In fact, they taught men civilization. They were the ones that caused humanity to build their greatest edifices. That's just basic. Now this would be the second part of the great cosmological clock, the great, uh, chrono the great clock of doom in the heavens. This, this word in Hebrew, Leviathan. This is a, a talisman from Eliphaz Levi. He's obviously illuminated, but this word is Hebrew and actually exists in the Old Testament and he has it circumscribing a pentagram. So you have the symbol here of the procession, because that's what this symbol is a cryptic thing of, and this outside of it, there's an addition to it. Leviathan here, he has uh, resolved a little bit clearer with a snake eating its tail. And the reason he's done that is because Leviathan in Hebrew actually means a serpent that's joined together. You can see Serpents join together uh, in antiquity, uh, a lot of esoteric sort of occult lore. This is actually a New Year's card, so it's associated with the turnover of the New Year. You can see here in Hebrew, Leviathan, Happy New Year. Always a serpent or a fish eating its tail. It's a big part of the clock in the heavens because this is the Milky Way. And it's orientated this way around the ecliptic. So this would be the star, the major hand of this clock. And this will be the lesser hand, which will resolve the hour with the greater clarity. clarity. And here it is. This is Leviathan. Here's the head of the snake right here, the tail going into his mouth, his body. You can look at it a little bit clearer here tail going into the mouth. And this actually is galactic central point. This is how you read the clock of doom. The cardinal points of the heavens where the cherubim occupy, the sign, they don't actually occupy it, but the symbol of them are here. The lion, the bull, the, water, the Aquarius, the man, and Ophiuchus right here. Right before you hit these cardinal points, you'll actually be able to bisect the whole zodiac twice. And one point here cuts it in half along where the Milky Way is. So you notice, if you have the procession actually taking 25,920 years to go once around, quarterly, when it hits these cherubim points, these cardinal points, it takes 6,480 years. That's just quartering up the processional year. What happens then is that when these signs are aligned to either the equinoxes or the solstices of our year, then we hit what's called the end or the beginning of an aeon. 
the Greeks actually had a time for the aeon. The aeon, to us, sounds like an ethereal, long stretch of time, but the aeon to the Greeks was actually this amount of time, 6,480 years. So you can move through here to here. When that happens, and you're actually on a solstice or an equinox, you know, you get up in the morning, the sun's rising right here between Pisces and Aquarius, you know that something big is going to happen. And in fact, that's exactly what's happening now. This is what it looks like. You get up on December 21st, winter solstice, the sun will rise right there in the mouth of this Leviathan, also called an Ouroboros. Rise right in the center of galactic central point. Crosses right through here. This is the ecliptic. All the planets cross right through this most holy site of the heavens, according to uh, the ancients. And you can see here, this is Sagittarius pointing right to the mouth here. Right before you get to where the proper symbol of Ophiuchus, the serpent holder, would be here. The Greeks would call this actual configuration a suntilia, which means the dividing point. Now, this maps out the dividing points. We're presently in one. They last for around, no, 200 years. I just picked 2012 because it seems to be a popular time for doomsdayer, doomsayers and uh, people who read the Aztec calendar. But if you count back from here, you actually start at the birth of history, 6,480 years, jump back again. The Pleistocene, where all these sites, these megalithic sites, seem to have been destroyed by water which fits perfectly into the idea of Noah's epic, the flood epic right here. Go back again, 6,480 years, glaciers at a maximum sea levels below 400 feet lower than present. And then you go back before that, another 6,480 